Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a click shift click. You've done it before, right? On different websites or even in Access itself with like a table. All right, you can do a click and then hold down the shift key and click that guy and then get everybody in the middle. Well, I'm going to teach you how to do it today on a continuous form using checkboxes. So you can click the first one, hold the shift key down, click the last one, and it will select everybody in the middle or deselect everybody. All right, you ready? Here we go. All right, folks, in the last video, I talked about doing something where we can click on one item and then hold the shift key down and click on another item and it selects everything between them. I think that'd be a good lesson, don't you? All right, it's going to involve some record sets. So if you don't know what record sets are, go, well, we've, we've done a bunch of record sets, but uh, if, you're, if you're coming in new, go watch my record sets video. This guy, right? Trying to make these, uh, these fitness videos since people stopped watching that weren't interested in fitness, like, you know, by around like 18. <laughs> so I'm trying to, if you haven't noticed, I've tried to retitle these so they have a more broad appeal. And since I have, the views have gone up. So that's that's wonderful. So what we're going to do is, here's our algorithm. Here's think, think about it this way in your head. So we only want to affect the current day. Okay. So we're going to loop from the record that is clicked on to the beginning of the day. We're going to add some more to it in a little bit. But that's our, our starting algorithm. So I'm going to start from this record and have a record set that walks back through all of these until it hits the start of the day. Nothing from yesterday or before. All right, let's, let's start with that. Now to figure out if the user clicks or just shift clicks, we, can have, we have to use the mouse down event because if you look at the events, the on click event, all right, which is the one you'd think about, the on click event does not have any way in here to tell you what the status of the shift key is. All right, so get rid of that. But what we can use, is the mouse down event. There's mouse down, mouse up, mouse move. Mouse down is when the user clicks a button and presses the button down. Mouse up is actually when they release that button. You'd think access would have a lot more like click and drag stuff a bit able to it with, or available to it with those two events, but no, not really. <laughs> so I almost never use mouse up, but mouse down is handy because mouse down sends you what button it was, right? Left, right, or middle. Then the shift, which indicates the uh, status of the shift control and alt keys. We only care about the shift key. So in this particular case, we're going to say if shift equals one, then that's the shift click. And you could say, I believe it's button equals one too. So we could say if button equals one, pretty sure. If button equals one and shift equals one. I know shift equals one is the shift key. I think uh, control is two and I think alt is four. I'm not positive. And we can test this by simply message boxing hi. So if the user hits shift left click, we should see a hi now. Right, if I just click, I get nothing. If I go shift click, I get hi. All right, okay. Now, instead of just message boxing, we want to loop through the records, starting with the current one, going backwards until we hit the start of the day. So we need a record set object. So dim rs as a record set. All right. In here, we're going to start up our record set and we're going to say set rs equals current db dot open record set. Select all the records from food or all the all the fields from food log t. And then we got some where conditions coming up. Let's go to the next line where let's say that the food date time, which is the field we're looking at, has to be less than the current food date time. Now, remember, the way we have our table set up, no two food date times can have the exact same time, right? Because if we type in a second one with the same time, it'll add a second to it. So if you're doing this with something that doesn't have a chronological ordering with a, with a date time stamp, um, you could look at like an auto number or some sort field or whatever you've got, but we're using food date time. And even if you didn't have that thing in there where uh, it's a second off, like we programmed in, it'll still work. You just might have several records that might be less than it with an equal time. So if you get like 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 9 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., and you click on 10 p.m., all three of those 9 p.m.s will be included in there. So it doesn't, you don't necessarily need that second offset that we built in. 
So where food date time in the record set, right, is less than, not less than or equal to, less than, because the, the click itself will change the value of the record that we're on. Okay? So we don't have to change it in the record set. And food date time, that's the actual field on the form this time. I know it's confusing. You got the value in the record set and the field on the form. And close your pound signs. Now we also need to stop when we get to the beginning of the day. All right, so space, and then we're going to make another co uh, continuation. And food date time is greater than or equal to right now, which is this guy up here, which is log date. All right, log date, and close that up. Actually, we need one more space in there because we need our order by. Order by is going to be food date time descending. Start with the current record and walk backwards. And if all that is valid and you hit enter, oh, it's not. See, that's how, that's how you can tell. Something's wrong in there. Oh, I know what I did. Anybody see it? Take a look real quick. Pause the video if you have to. Do you see the problem? It's actually not my SQL. It's the fact that I forgot to close my parenthesis right there. My SQL is actually good. There we go. See, that's how that's a check there. What you want to do is make sure when you hit enter, all your stuff properly capitalizes and all that. Okay. All right. All right. So now inside the loop, while not rs.eof, do some stuff. RS move next. When I always put the bookends on my loops so that and always remember this guy so that you don't endless loop. Okay, now at this point, let's just test it and make sure everything's working so far. Let's edit the record and set has eaten to true. We'll just set them all to true. So we're going to say rs edit rs has eaten equals true rs update. All right, that updates all of the records. When I, whenever I shift click, it updates all the records before the one I'm on to true. You ready? Okay. Debug compile once in a while. Come back out here. And now I'm going to shift click on this guy. Boom. There you go. Okay. It looped backwards through all of them till it hit the beginning of the day and set them all equal to true. For a Star Trek pun, it checked off. <laughs> Get it? Check off. <laughs> all of those items. I, I couldn't resist. Okay. Now, moving to the next step. What I'd like to happen is... Let's say I want to see just how many calories are in this coffee item here, right? This guy, this guy, and this guy. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to have it so when I check the first one, if I check this guy here, it stops when it hits a checked one. So if I do this now, right now it's doing all of them, but I want it to stop there. Okay, so in my loop, I can stop the while loop. Let me make a little space here so we can see this. All right, right here, you'd think it'd be just as easy as saying, and RS has eaten equals false, right? As long as it's false, then you can loop backwards, stop when it, you hit one that's not false. But look at what happens. Let me uncheck these. All right, ready? Click, shift click. And oh, sometimes it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I just found a case where it doesn't. Watch this. Okay, if I do shift click here now, boom, that's what happens. You get the no current record. Because what's happening is, it's going past the EOF. See, watch what happens. If I put a breakpoint here, okay, let me uncheck these again. And if I do shift click now, all right, right here, our SEOF is false, fine. It does that record, goes to the next record, goes to the next record, it's going backwards. Now, eventually, it's gonna hit the beginning where the RS, RS EOF is true and you get no current record because it can't evaluate RS has eaten. Okay. And this is a, this is an issue with VB and VBA is that it tries to evaluate the entire line instead of just stopping here and saying, okay, I've hit the, I've hit the end of the record. That means this is going to be false. I should just drop out now. That's called short circuit evaluation. Languages like C, C++ and all that have that and it won't even bother evaluating the rest of the line. But with VB, it does, it evaluates the entire line. So the trick is to simply move this part inside the loop, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, while not RSEOF, we're gonna come down in here, and we're gonna say, if RS has eaten equals false, 
then do this stuff, right? And then end if. Save it, debug compile, and now it should work. Watch, I can do this one to this one. Oh, it's going all the way to the beginning though, because we didn't tell it to stop. So we have to put an exit the loop inside of here, right? All right, so else exit while. Oh, wait a minute, why is it red? Anybody know? Yeah, there is no exit while. That's one of the downsides of a, of a while loop is you can't exit out of it gracefully. You could put a go to in there, but I hate go to statements. I avoid them if I can, with the exception of error handling. Go to statements are helpful for er error handling. So we just have to slightly rewrite this. I love while loops. I usually do everything with while loops and for loops. If I know how many times I have to loop, I use a for loop. If I don't, I use a while loop. So in this case, we just have to switch the while loop to a do while loop and that you can exit out of it's a it's a newer like version 2.0 while loop so it's do while and then in here you can say exit do and then when just simply becomes loop it's a do while loop it's just changing the structure just slightly and now what'll happen is it'll go backwards until it hits a false and when it does hit a false it'll exit the do loop because you're done All right Save it, debug, compile, come back out, meow. And every time I hear do, I, th I think of my dogs because whenever I want to do something with the dogs, I'll say do, and their heads will tilt. Like, do you want to go for a car ride? Or do you want to go swimming? I'm saying all the keywords now and I can see their heads moving. <laughs> they know all this, they're getting all excited. <laughs> all right, anyways, let me uncheck all these. All right, let's try it again. Let's shift click here. Okay, that worked. Let's click here and then shift click here and it stopped and exited the loop see now we got one more thing left to do and that is let's make it so we can undo those as well right instead of making it all false let's make it equal to the value of the guy we're checking so if we're unchecking the box do the same thing just backwards and that's just changing a couple things so we're going to say if rs has eaten equals has eaten the box we're checking on right then all you want to do is flip it so rs has eaten equals not rs has eaten and that's it save it come back out here now we can go click shift click to turn all those on or click shift click to turn them all off look at that isn't that cute all right come down here when i get rid of these guys click shift click uh, didn't get that one in the middle. Let's see here. What happened? Click. Shift click. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's figure this one out. You know what? I think it just glitched because, and sometimes you're, sometimes access does that folks. Cause I just exited out and tried it again. Right. Click, click, click. I can go shift or click and then shift click. And now it's working. I think it was just a glitch. And that's why a lot of the times you see me tell you, save it, right? Save it, save it, close it and reopen it because VB does glitch sometimes. It, it's working, I've tried it like 10 times off camera and it's working perfectly now. So yeah, sometimes a glitch throws in there. Um, there is another bug that I discovered and we'll fix it another time, but you know our little one second offset trick, it doesn't fire if we manually type the time in here. So if I put in here 9 p.m. something, right, my caps lock's on. If I come in here and type in 9 p.m. something else, Okay, and if I look at the table now, come to the bottom, and where are you? And look, see, 9 p.m., 9 p.m. So we have to add that little code that increments the time if it sees that exact time in there when we manually add an item to, and we'll do that in the next class. We'll start off with that bug fix. But there you go, now you got a really cool way to click, shift click any of your items that you want, right? Click. Shift click turns them all off. I, I like that. Um, I mean, we can also set up one to, to select them. Let's make a select all next time too. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Maybe down here, select all. We'll figure it out. Well, that is going to do it for your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.
If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.